Hey everyone, it's Emmanuel. Um, we had some issues, uh, technical issues earlier. I apologize for that. Hey guys, this is Emmanuel, your Chief Healing Officer of Inside Out Institute. So glad you guys are here. Um, I was having some issues with the last video, so I had to turn it off. So hopefully you guys are still here. You're still listening. Let me know where you're dialing in from. I'm going to go ahead and message, message everyone say, Hi, I am from Layton, Utah. Okay, so that's where I'm dialing in from. Where are you guys dialing in from? And if you guys can, if anybody wants to participate in the healing session, feel free to tag two people and you will qualify. I'll put you on the list and we will get you going. So um, today I want to talk about the myths about the road to healing. And I really want to be very forthright with everyone here. First of all, if you're in this group, you're someone who likes to progress and grow. This is a fact. And I'm impressed by you. And even if you weren't in this group and you're just alive and your heart is beating, I'm impressed with you. Why? There are certain things that I know about you that maybe you may not know about yourself. But let's just say everybody who comes into the world, I know things about you that you did in the spirit world. And because you're here, I applaud you. Congratulations to coming here on the second probation. And you are a winner in my mind. Now, can we become better? Can we progress more? Can we increase our frequency? Yes, but we have to start with just loving ourselves where we're at right now. Uh, if things aren't going great for you in finances, if things aren't going great for you in your relationship, if you can't figure out what your mission is in life, that should not determine how much you should love yourself. You should love yourself no matter what. You don't qualify for love, and you don't need to qualify to love yourself. And these are hard things to kind of take in. I mean, to be honest, so much of my life was based on performance-based love, and it is literally never-ending. The search for, I need to qualify for this, then I'll be loved. And then I got to qualify for this, then I'll be loved. Then, or if I do this for my partner, then I'll be loved. It's it's honestly the most tiresome journey. And so I want us to all start off with this. Today, I don't know, care. I don't care where you're dialing in from, um, you know, who you are, what race you are, who you voted for, I don't care. All I know is you're a son or you're a daughter of a creator. You deserve to be loved and you deserve to love yourself. Let's just start with that. Now, the healing journey is a very interesting journey. Um, and the reality is, is we think it's sunshine and roses and everything's so easy and, you know, oh, I'm getting a healing. I feel so good. I feel so relaxed. But here's what I found out. The, the, the scariest thing about energy healing is finding out new terminologies in the emotion code or body code chart. New terminologies freak me out. Let me, let me tell you why. Because it's almost like, where were these energies when I was five years old or six years old? How come I'm not learning this in school to know how to make myself feel peace in the inside? Who cares about where, what, how many cities are in Africa? What I care about is, can I have a peace of mind? There are millions and millions of people around the world that are taking their lives right now or thinking of doing it. Don't you think knowing all what's going on inside of us is more important than what X plus Y equals Z? Yes, it is more important. But unfortunately, we're in a broken system where wealthy people put us in schools so that we can get it with a very expensive receipt so we can go to a job to work 40 hours, uh, you know, basically working 40 hours for 40 years to retire with 40% of what you couldn't live off anyway. And maybe you won't even find your mission in your job because you're too busy building someone's dream. So we have to find out, guys, what, what's, let's be selfless and let's be selfish with ourself. Like we need to know what's going on, who am I, where am I going, where did I come from, why am I so reactive, why am I so emotional, why are things not going my way? These are great questions to ask. And usually when someone starts asking those questions, that's the beginning of their healing journey. That's the beginning where they go, I need to find someone. I need to do something. Some people go to Peru to take ayahuasca and they go and take a tribe leader to, to find out who they are. Some people go into like 
a religious frenzy to go study religion and see you know how the pieces fit some people find energy healing and want to become you know energetically balanced to find out who they really are whatever ticket you use to find your inner peace good for you and uh, I'm glad that you're doing that so um, I know there's a lot of cool people on here there's uh, Lori uh, Har City Jolyn Rowe hey Sue there's Neil Galligan hey Gala how's it going I'm glad you guys are here and remember if anybody would like to volunteer hopefully I'm trying to work on someone that I haven't worked with yet uh, that'd be nice um, but just feel free to um, tag two people. Tag two people that you want to bless, that you feel like they need a breakthrough. I love them so much. I'm tagging them. Because here's the cool thing is that if you notice, I'm not asking for any money on here. Now, see, it'd be weird if you were like po tag people on here and like I'm requesting friends, funds from everyone. That would be strange. You, these friends wouldn't appreciate you tagging them. But because I'm offering this for free, they come in here, they might say, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll go to his next healing um, session next week. And I have some serious stuff that I'm dealing with with my daughter. Like, what can I do, you know? So the, the point is this, is that we really, really need to um, understand that our healing journey is very crucial um, because we are, our scales are not balanced. They say that the average second grader heard the word no over 40,000 times. There's a saying that says that we were created for success but programmed for failure. And I truly believe that because we think we come in at eight years old going like everything's fine, but we are neglecting the fact that we don't know that we're energetic, emotional bodies. We also don't know what the terms are to release them. We don't know the methodology to acquire these energies and then get rid of them. So we're stuck with dealing with a fake personality. Like because when you become very reactive to, to life and things like that, that's not really who you are. Do you, you guys get that? Put a one down there if you've ever said something to someone and then 20 minutes later you regret doing that. Go ahead and put a one down there. Let me know that if that's ever happened to you. Pretty sure everyone on here has experienced that before. And what I mean by that is that that's not really you. That is, is your reactive side of you that you've accumulated either in your lifetime, in the womb, or was inherited, or it was in your spirit life. So I want to give you credit because you probably have a lot of stuff that's going well for you, but everyone has like a weak spot. Everyone has like an Achilles uh, tendon, like, you know, everyone has some type of thorn on their side. I don't, I haven't met a person who hasn't had some type of thorn where just this area in their life is not working. So I want to also congratulate you because most of you guys probably read self-development, read new books, acquire new information. And you, um, and it's good. It's great. But I'll tell you this, when you get into a fight with somebody, try to remember chapter six, uh, chapter 6 page 35 on the five love languages try to recall that and even if you recalled it try to calm yourself down to emulate what the author said you should do it's really hard it's really really hard we don't need more knowledge we need more um we need to deprogram ourselves we need to, sometimes it's not acquiring information, it's losing things that don't serve us anymore. Does everyone hear what I'm saying? Put a happy face if you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's not learning. Sometimes it's unprogramming things. It's, we're, we're hardwired by our environment and by our family members, but that's not really who you are. You haven't even seen the best version of yourself. Isn't that exciting? That should be exciting to everyone who's listening to this. You haven't even seen the best version of yourself. If you haven't done one year of healing where you're consistent on a weekly basis doing energy healing and then you're doing your spirituality stuff or you're, you're, you're reading books and you're taking a hold of your life by the horns, you actually don't know the best version of yourself yet, which is exciting. And trust me, I was there 2015, 2015, 
my relationship, this is a French word, uh, 2015, my relationship sucked. Uh, I also, my, my, uh, my finances, terrible. Um, my finding no clarity for my mission at an all time high. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was completely miserable at my job. That was just 2015. I told one of my friends to work on me on a weekly basis and my relationship changed, my zip code changed, my home changed, my career changed, my faith has increased, my passion for my work has increased, everything changed because I made the conscious decision to call my friend on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock in the morning when he was still sleeping and telling him to apologize to his wife that I need help, I'm drowning, help, help, help. And he came to my rescue and he worked on me. I had to humble myself. How many people like to be humble? Not a lot of people. There's a saying that says that if you wanna be, if you want to be, you can either be rich or right, but you can't be both. That's what T. Harvecker said. You're either right or you're rich, but you can't be both. What does that mean? It means most of our friends and family would rather be right just because they like feeling right. But that doesn't mean that they're succeeding in that area of their life. How many people have given you hair advice and they have the craziest hair you've ever seen? How many people are saying, oh, you should do this, you should do this, and they're talking about diet and programs, and they're 140 pounds overweight? How many people are getting advice about spiritual things and maybe they come home and they have a pornography problem. Like we really don't know how people are suffering within their four walls, but they're preaching out there that they know what they're talking about. I would rather, again, monkey see, monkey do. I really believe in like full integrity. They say that integrity is when the person inside the room matches the same person in the house, which matches the same person in the city. The only way to get to that point is you have to focus on healing. You have to focus on some healing. And so I want to do a quick session real quick. Um, I want to work on someone. um, There was somebody that that commented on here. Um, Harsidi Pancholi. I don't know if she's still here. Um, But um, I would love to uh, do a quick session for you. You just said something earlier. You said you had a big argument with your eight-year-old daughter. I want to do a, a session for you because of this. So here's the scariest thing that I found in the body code. You guys ready for this? It's not scary. It's just not comforting, okay? What's not comforting is any of these. How would you guys like to know that someone put a curse on you? No, I don't think anyone would like that. How would you like to know that somebody from the other side probably doesn't know they're dead but want to connect with you to make your life miserable? Probably don't want to know that. You probably don't want to know that you're courted with somebody else that you used to be with. Even though they've moved on, you moved on, you still feel the energies of an ex-mate. How many of you guys would like to know that? No, I don't think anybody here. What about hypnotized statements? That if you were in an environment at a home where you um, you hear something over and over again, it can get hypnotized and now your body believes it 100%. How many, guys would, how many of you guys would like to know you guys have some of those that – Anytime you're like, I'm going to succeed. And then in your mind, something says, you'll be no one. Like, what the? Where did that come from? Uh, That's not going to help. Okay, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't do this. Or maybe I should stop trying this business. Or maybe I should stop trying to be the next rank in my job. Because they heard a louder voice than their personal conscious voice. Or maybe you have a weapon in your body. I would like to know that you... Like, oh, my neck always hurts. And you find out that your friend that you broke up with 10 years ago sent you a rope around your neck, and now you're walking around with a rope. See, so the point is this, is that these are all called offensive energies. And the reason why I said the road to healing, the myths to it, the biggest myth is that if you keep working on yourself, like self-development-wise, that everything will be okay. The world outside will respect you. But if you have any of these things, like a curse, an entity, courting, a post my suggestion, or a saboteur energy, uh, or there's other stuff, which is like um, you may have a um, 
this one's the the, the crazier one is uh, if you have a broadcast message um, command messages sub, such as abuse me or ignore me or descriptive messages of like I'm stupid or I'm invisible and people read these on you they like their subconscious basically recognizes you have this and then they treat you accordingly so uh that's really interesting watch this having a negative broadcast message could could have a harmful influence on the subconsciously formed opinions of others about you and you could and could cause you to attract people behavior or situations that you'd rather not wow if that doesn't shock you, then you don't have a heartbeat. Because for me, I was like, wait, you got to be kidding me. So that whole kick me thing, uh, like you know, someone put a kick me uh, sort of sign on your shirt, a little sticker or tape and little paper, that's a real energetic thing that you can have on your body, and that's why you get kicked the rest of your life. So no matter – so that's what I want to the, – the, the biggest myth that I want to share with you guys today is the myth – that just doing self-development is enough and just doing energy healing which is like you know you might go out there and get some reiki done on you you might get some acupuncture done or just some stuff on you but it only has to do with you you see it's like you may feel better but does that really remove your broadcast message that somebody else is acting strange towards you or someone's acting mean to you or someone's whatever no it doesn't so yeah, your internal universe is doing pretty good, but you still might be putting off things that make people act strange or mean or rude to you. And what's the point if you're going to heal yourself? Don't you want to feel safe in your environment? Don't you want to feel like no one like like everyone else sees you different just as you are different? Not if you have one of these. If you have a couple of broadcast messages and you're sending them out there, I don't care how much you change. In the inside, people will treat you. Then people should are going to treat you in a wrong way that you really don't deserve at all. And you'll keep attracting people that aren't worthy of your time all the time, and that's scary. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that idea. So let's see if we can uh, work with um, Harsidi real quick. And um, if she's still there, go ahead and feel free to uh, comment here. Actually, you know what we could do? Let's let's even make this more fun here. Why don't I call her CD and you guys can hear her voice? How, how cool would that be? I don't know if she's open to do this. But if you are, Har CD, um, what you could do is this. is um, Go ahead and uh, uh, if you want to inbox me my your number, just like message me, uh, maybe on Facebook your number and then I will call you and uh, you could talk to me over the phone and we could do the session real quick just I just want to just help you out with you and your daughter real quick I want to see if maybe I can improve that would you be okay with that because I want to show how healing the insides great but also removing anything that makes your environment hostile let's get that down to a zero let's make her happy with her environment because she's made the decision to uh, work on herself. So shouldn't she feel safe? And the answer is yes, she won't feel safe if she's sending out the wrong messages to others. So that's what I want to tell you. The biggest myth is like, it's all about working on yourself, working on yourself. Yeah, like, like great. That's great. You feel better. You feel more confident. Fantastic. But are you removing the things that are influencing others? You know, that's the question. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, call this number here real quick. This sounds like it could be a WhatsApp number. Hi, Madeline. Oh, hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Okay, guys, can you guys all hear her? Hopefully you guys can hear her okay. Um, let me know if you guys can hear her okay. I'm going to, like, put you as close to my speaker as, as I can that way. Uh, people can hear you here. So let's do this. So let's let's get started here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a notepad out. And uh, let me see. H-A-R-S-I-D-D-H-I. -D -D -I. Okay. So what is your um, what is your age? How young are you? 37. 37? 
Okay, 37, okay. So 37 years young. Okay, great. So and um, so tell me about your daughter's situation. Do you, I know, how many kids do you have? I've got two. One, um, she's soon turning eight um, in about a week's time, and another one's a four-year-old, and another fortnight's time. Okay. Oh, so yeah, there's kind of a big gap there. So, you, so one of them is twenty-eight. Is that right? No, no, no. The one is eight, and one is oh, four. Oh, one is eight, and one is four. I was gonna say, I'm like, that's a pretty big gap there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so one years old, and one four years old. Now, you had one that was uh, recently. You guys kind of had a scuffle a little bit, and that was the uh, eight-year-old one, correct? Yeah, just this morning, I literally dropped it. Like, I can't thank you enough for this. Like, when I heard your words, I'm like, oh, my God, this is meant for me today. Yeah, so so this is – um, um. let's see if we can kind of um, – now, there's two ways we can do this, guys. We can either work with the 8-year-old that maybe, you know, needs some work there, uh, or we work with the mom, right? And um, the only person that would really kind of um, – if I just ask for some help and just say – you know, from the creator, okay, you know who needs more of the work here, which one would cause the most, right? It may be that, the, again, it could be you, um, CD that you're sending stuff off to her, but it could be your eight-year-old. And obviously, it because you're the mother and she's under 18, um, you can give me permission to work with her, and I could just do a quick session to be like, why is she acting that way, you know, and then kind of see there could be stuff going on, you know? So um, what's her name, by the way? What's, what's her name, by the way? Ira, I-R-A-H. A, I R A H. Correct. Okay, Ira. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take ten seconds, real quick. We'll ask for some help in our mind uh, that our sessions inspired, and then um, and then I'll just kind of like ask to see who I should really work with. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. Okay, so let's see. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and ask, which one should I work with here? Oh, it's work with your, uh, it's work with your little one. Yeah, it's you? No. Yeah, it's work with your little one. So let, let's follow that prompting and let's just let's just work with your little one real quick. Um, what do you what what what's um what's the biggest thing you've noticed about her? Like she tends to do this or she always does this, and you're just kind of like that's. I know that's not really her, um, but what is that for you? For you, that you've noticed about her? Yeah, it's just that like recently she's become very, very uh, rebellious to, and like resistant actually more than rebellious. Yeah, so so so, so, so like, she's you know, anything she's, that works for her, she's become resistant to it. Okay, okay, got it. So she she's she's kind of. Would you say that she's kind of defiant? Yes. Yeah, defiant. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and, and see what we find here. And uh, and then if you could do me a favor, keep me updated. Um, send me an email. Uh, you can send it to uh, compasshealing2019 uh, at gmail.com. So I'll go ahead and uh, look this one here. So compasshealing2019. And for those of you who just joined on here, um, uh, Harsidi uh, is uh, here. I'm working with her. But then I... I She's she's having some things like um, uh, she has a, def, a moment where her daughter was defiant, and I was just asking him like, is there something that we need to work on her or her daughter? And the daughter came up. Okay, so we're gonna like work on just defiance, right? Because again, how cool, how sad is it when a person comes home, they're trying to work on themselves, trying to become better, blah blah blah. But they they come home to a home where it's like they don't even believe in energy healing. They don't. They're not changing. They're not removing their heart walls. And you're kind of like dealing with sort of the old skin of like where you used to be. It's kind of like it's like the old home because now you're you're changing and evolving. You're like I don't even recognize you guys sometimes. And that, that's you, what you want to do is you don't want to go back to how you were. You want to help elevate the whole house. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's find out. I'm going to connect with her real quick. So let me just go ahead and uh, uh, connect with her. Uh, so Ira here. Okay, so let's just see. Um, in regards to defiance, what's the biggest thing I can release for her to kind of help her out here? Let's see what we find. Um, okay, there's some type of uh, energy here, and um, yeah, she's an she has a oh, whoops, sorry, she has a. Okay, it's not that. 
Okay, she has an allergy to something, okay? So she has a um, idea allergy, okay? So what is an idea allergy? It's basically um, whenever an idea comes up or a certain idea or concept, she can get very triggered, kind of like, whoa, don't like that, kind of like she wants to push away, you know? So this can happen yep. for many reasons, but let me find out what type of allergy she has real quick. Now, as you can see here, we have a lot of uh, allergies here, and I'm going to see if I can maybe lower this down a little bit. Okay, so is this uh, column C, no, column B, no, column A? Okay, it's column A. No, I mean. um, okay. Okay, so I'm looking up on A2 here. Yeah, so um, basically she has an allergy to betraying herself. So maybe, for example, if she does it her way, you know, um, you know that uh, like she wants to do things her way, if that makes sense. And then whenever she's not doing it kind of her way, kind of like kind of like she's like betraying herself, she actually can get angrier than normal. Like you know, so yeah. um, and so if I ask, for example, um, and you guys, you guys, um, I'm gonna say, is there an associated imbalance below this? Her body said yes. Okay, so there's a reason why she has this. So here's the fun part: is let's see why she has this. Okay, some type of energy here. Uh, okay, something mental here. Let's see what this is. There's some programming. Okay, so she has a despair anchor. Okay, so despair anchor. It's basically a negative statement that her body's kind of like looking for it to be true. So it's not just any negative statement. It's like it's, she's like looking for it to be true. So let me see what this, which one is hers. Let me see. Um, the, Um, yeah, it's kind of like, um, she feels like she's never enough, okay? So I don't know if you've ever got that kind of feeling from her, like she kind of like, maybe she's really hard on herself sometimes, but it, it's kind of like, like, if I'm never going to be enough, I might as well just listen to myself only, if I'm never going to be enough anyway. So that's kind of what's going on here. So I need to, I'm going to say, is there something below this, I'm never enough here? Body said no. So let's go ahead and remove this despair anchor here real quick. Let's also release, release this allergy of betraying yourself. So even if she's just being obedient to someone else, it's not going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm betraying myself, and then time to get angry now, like that. We're going to kind of release that allergy there. Uh, I'm going to say, is there something else we can release to kind of help her be less defiant? Her body said yes. Okay, so we're going to go back in here. And let's see what else we find. Okay. Yeah, yeah go ahead. She just feels very jealous um, because of the younger one. Like now that he's growing up and he's got his own sort of vocal sort of thoughts and everything. And so she's, just, she's just become very jealous of him and she thinks she's not good enough now that, you know, I have someone else to... To take care of. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, let's see what else we have going here. Um, so there's a, some type of energy here. Let's see what this is. Um, yeah, something mental here. Um, so it's uh, programming. Okay, so it's actually this image here. So let me ask this question. Um, what type of uh, image is this? Is this... Uh, a re is this an actual event? No. Recalled memory? No. Something imagined? Something symbolic? Something symbolic. Uh, is this like a symbol of your mom at all? No. Symbol of your, um, uh, the, the little four-year-old, that's a boy, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is, is, it, is it a picture of the of your brother at all? There we go. Yeah. So there's a photo of the brother in her mind. Okay. And I'm going to find out What's the theme of this real quick? I'm going to say usually uh, photos have like a theme. So I'll just ask like like when you think of your brother, what do you get? Let's see what this is real quick. Um, okay, yeah. So it's um, – see, what you, what you may see is jealousy – for her, it's self-abuse. For her, it's her being oh. hard on herself. Yeah. but And so she's like, oh, you know, you're not paying attention to me anymore and blah, 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 blah. So as soon as she's a brother, it's like she starts beating herself up. So you may see 
jealousy out there, but in the inside, she's just beating herself up. Does that make sense? So, I'm wow, gonna, that is such a golden child. Yeah, so I'm going to say, is there something else below this image here? Body says, no, okay, let's go ahead and release this image here. That way, you know, she doesn't keep having an image in her mind of a brother that causes self-abuse. Let me just release one more thing to help her out here. I'll say, there's there one more big thing that I can release here to help her out in regards to defiance here. Let's see what we can find here. Okay, energies. She has another allergy. Yeah, she has another idea allergy. That's interesting. Okay, so idea allergy. Let's see what this allergy is all about. By the way, allergy is, is the um, can cause a lot of triggers. So if you want to kind of remember that um, allergies cause less allergies you have, the less triggered you get. You know, people who get upset really quickly, they're like, whoa, what's going on? I'm like, that's probably an allergy. There's some allergy going on. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out what is, uh, what's this allergy here real quick. Let's see. Wow, that's interesting. This is really interesting. This is a specific person. Um, okay. Is this a uh, male? No. Is this a male? No, it's a female. It is a female. Um, this could be you, actually. Let me see. Is this you? Yeah, it is sure. you. I, yeah. So that's interesting. So she's she has I an so. she, she has an allergy to you. Um, I'm going to say, is there an associated imbalance below this? Body said yes. Let's figure out why that is the case. Okay. So let's go ahead and kind of dig deeper here. Some type of energy here. Um, okay. Yeah, there's um, there's something mental here. Let's see what this is. No. Yeah, there's like a will to. Uh, she has a will to energy. We'll find out what this will to is all about. A will to what? Let's see what this is. Yeah, it's actually, she has a will to break others' wills. You know, like, like you know, like, you know, so you probably deal with that where it's like, you, you're like, like, you got to do this, you know, and she, and she likes to break your will. So that, she she might have had that, who knows. Um, if I say, when did you get this? See, eight, seven, six, five. So this is a moment around six years old where she might have done that once. But the problem yeah. is you, you, you think, oh, okay, cool. Well, that was over. Woo, like that's done. But the problem is, is that... Um, that energy's still in her to will to break others' will. See, for right now, it's you. But that could be later on when she gets married, she'll break the will of her husband or she'll break the will of her boss. You know, so it's kind of like an energy that yep. stays in there. Uh, but this kind of contributes to her allergy to you. So let's go ahead and remove this will to break others' will here. I'll say, is there anything else contributing to this idea allergy for a specific person, which is the mom? And her body says no. So let's go ahead and remove this allergy here. Reese's allergy and body said yes. Okay, cool. All right, well, I'm just going to do, I'm going to go ahead and reset her heart chakra. And then I'm going to go ahead and program her body to process easily, peacefully, and effectively. And I'll just disconnect from her right here. Okay. So um, if you can do me a favor, Harsidi, just look, look, um, almost kind of go out of your way to connect with her, to be like, hey, how's it going? You know, and um, I want you to kind of take a journal or, uh, or maybe even use your notepad on your phone to notice any little differences. Um, now, if she gets upset for some reason, then I want you to pay attention to how fast she gets out of it. Like she might, she might be like, you know, gets upset, but then she's like, oh, whatever, you know. And then you're like, okay, cool. Like that would usually last longer, but for some reason it's shorter, you know. Or mm -hmm. she may say a nice comment to you, and you're like, okay, she never compliments. What's going on, you know? Or she listens to you one time. And you're just like, okay, that's not normal. It's usually a little bit of fight before. It. So any little coincidence, and then the the this is what I've learned as a father myself is don't point it out when you see it. Because you know how kids are. As soon as you point it out, they're just like, oh no, like, you know, I have to be miserable so I get a lot of attention, you know? So don't don't call her out and say, hey, I noticed that you're being a little different today. Like, don't, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Just just be kind of like a fly on the wall and just be nice to her. Just like, hey, how's it going, blah, blah, just whatever. Do, do the usual mom thing you do and then just see if you notice some differences here and there, okay? Oh, thank you so much, Emmanuel. I'm so, so, so grateful to you today. Yeah, you're so welcome. I, I, I can't wait to hear some updates on this. And that's the beautiful thing about the body code, too, is that you can work with kids. I, I've worked with maybe four or five kids that they all had night terrors. And uh, it was kind of crazy. Like, um, we only did one session, maybe two at the most. 
uh, and then they'd had no more night terrors anymore, you know. And so people go, oh, this has got to be some placebo effect. This can't be real. Well, I wasn't in the room with the baby, so there's no reason why the baby should change if this was a placebo effect. So, um, so the baby can be worked on, and the dog can get worked on. You know, dog who has who is scared of uh, lightning. You know, I work on the dog, and the dog walks out there like he owns the earth. You know what I'm saying? So what's you know, I don't I don't speak dog the last time I checked, you know. So um so so that's the cool thing, guys. So I, I don't I don't have um you have to understand that people aren't used to seeing amazing things without skepticism, you know. Um the uh, the founder of Elon uh, Elon Musk, for example, he said um what he performs in many ways is like magic. Like, you know, look at this rocket that landed on its legs for the first time or uh, an electric car that can go as fast as a sports car. If He said if you were to bring it back into the 1940s or 30s, people would look at you like you, you're doing magic, you know. And he, he said, but he's like, these are going to be normal things, but the world always looks at it with skepticism. And so um, even with this work, I've seen some skepticism, but... That's why I like to usually typically work on pain and lower it down. So, um, but anyway, I'm so grateful I got to work with your uh, your daughter there. Um, I will send you the notes. So go ahead and message me your email. I'll send you the notes to you, and then um, and then just let me know. Please keep me updated on her, and you can even keep us updated on this uh, on this uh, Facebook page if you want to be like, hey guys, just a little update with my daughter, and then we can just kind of uh, go from there. Okay. Will do, will do. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. All right, thank you for being on here. Yeah, bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right, guys, so that was uh, – I'm glad we got to do this, and uh, you never know what you're going to get uh, when we're doing this. But um, here's the thing, guys. I, I love working with um, – like when I, I'm a part of Inside Out Institute, I, I co-founded it. And one of the biggest things that I would love to see in this world is everyone is in one heart, one mind. Everyone is one heart and one mind. And that we can have a heaven in our home – before we bring heaven on earth. That's what this work can do, is Harsidi deserves to go into her house and have the ability to bring heaven to her home. And as that happens, the world can change because it all started from our home. So I, I it's always an honor. I remember when I first worked my, my practice for the first two, three, four years, if you worked with me before, I was like, can I work on your kid? Oh, let me work on him. Yeah, I'll do it for free. I, I just want to work with, you know, it's because I was hungry to change that home and to let the parents know that that their kids haven't seen the best version of themselves, their animals haven't seen the best version of themselves, that we can literally give everyone peace of mind in the home and then everyone elevates together. So with that, thank you guys so much for being on here. Uh, it was an honor to work with um uh, with with Ira uh, Harcidi, and uh, I will send you the notes later on. And um, if you have any questions at all, if you're if you're maybe someone like, hey, um, what is this inside out stuff you're doing over there? Uh, feel free to write advisory board member on the comment section. You know, just write, or you can write a. You, you can even write inside out. Just write hashtag inside out. If you're like you want to know something about what I do, uh, we are creating an organization where we are. Um, combining transformational coaches and energy healers to work together and to partner together and uh, to change the world. It's really what we're doing. And it started all in the midst of COVID, which is kind of a beautiful thing. How, how great is that? When the biggest darkness comes to this earth, Todd and I were coming together to make something full of light, to bring more light to houses, to cities, to countries, and eventually the world. And so um, I'm so grateful for anyone who is an inside out. I'm grateful that you are participating in this huge movement. Again, if you have questions about, hey, I want to be a coach at home and would love to partner with a healer or, or I'm a healer, I'm an energy healer, but I don't have a huge system where like I work with people and have a family of people that I work with or I don't have a, a transformational coach that I can work aside with me, well, you're missing out because Inside Out is a huge train passing by. So again, just go ahead and put hashtag Inside Out and that, that somebody will reach out to you. Um, an advisory board member will reach out to you and give you more information. Uh, so with that, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for being on here. And uh, feel free to, again, if you guys could do me all a small favor, please share this on your wall. Tag a friend. Just do whatever you can to get this information out. Trust me, there are too many people suffering 
let's not be selfish. Let's help people out. And if they only knew about this, they could literally live the life that they want. And I believe everyone deserves that because you guys are all uh, the sons and daughters of a loving creator. So with that, I love you guys. Take care, and we will talk soon. Bye-bye.